And we're back. So let's continue on with the structure. We did some structuring up here. Um, structure is basically basically adding tags that we can call on in our CSS to style the page. So that's what we're really doing right here if you think about it. So back to live and uh, I want to do something with this H1. Um, H, I can um, control H1 where it sits on the page but it means every H1 on the page will do the same thing. So I'm going to give it a class by just in the live view I can click right here add class or ID and I'm going to pick if you don't specify with a hashtag then you'll get a class uh, selector so I'm going to type a uh, headline and it should show up right here dot headline that's my class selector so if it starts with the dot it's a class if it starts with a hashtag then it is an ID. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to come down here and set its position to absolute. I am going to go to the top pixels and scrub it down so it gets closer to where it's supposed to be here. I'm going to have to change the size of the type but right now I'm just going to get it in position. So I'm going to scrub that over like that. I love working in live view. It's uh, much more intuitive. Um, let's deal with the type size. So over here, my class for H1 is going to be size, sorry, right here. Um, we're going to set it in M's. There's a lot of ways to set it pixels, points, percentages. We're going to use EMs. It should scale with our website okay. Let's start at about two point two, now three, four, two point four M's, that looks about right. I'm going to come back to my position and scrub it back up. All right, and that looks about right. Now this type is obviously wrong and we're going to use a web font here and we'll deal with that in another movie. But for right now I want to deal with all of this text that's going to fit in this box over here. So I will select all of this type. I will do that by turning this on design and then I will select the remaining type on the page all the way to the bottom. There we go. Every bit of it. And then I'm going to wrap that in a tag and this one's going to be called, is going to be a main tag. So under insert, under structure, I should find main. This is where the main content of my page so I might as well use main. Um, while I'm in design view instead of um, live view I get a different insertion uh, menu. It's not hovering over the, the thing and saying wrap around but I still have the same kind of selections. So wrap around selection is correct. We're going to style main so I don't need class or ID and I can just say okay right here. And If I look at my code all of my text now should be surrounded by this tag main and it ends right there. So that's good. Back to design mode. Actually back to live mode. So I want to write a style now to make it look more like this. Um, so in designer mode, let's go, I'm sorry, we're in live mode, but in the designer panel, um, I need to make a new rule for main. I don't have one yet, so I'm going to plus I don't need it to be a compound selector, it doesn't need to be this specific, so I'm going to use the up arrow key to make that main, hit return, and you guessed it, the first thing I'm going to do is change the positioning to absolute. Um, I'm going to change the background color, the background color shall be black, so there's black, I can see it a little bit better, back to position again, I want to position it with pixels from the top, scroll it on down here, this might take a while, alright here we go, and I'm going to line it up about right there, from the left, 
pixels again and slide it on over this way. Keep on going. And about right there. I'm just lining up the box right now. Now I need to deal with the width of the box. If I slide over here, I can see that I'm a little bit short. Um, in order to do this, well, I'll show you what the problem is. I'm going to go back up here to the width. Um, I'm also going to pick pixels for this. As I start uh, making that box wider, when I get to the edge, I slide this over, and then I start doing this, and it pops back over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Command minus, which is under the View menu somewhere in here, Magnification, Command minus to zoom out, just so I can do this part. Normally you want to work in one-to-one -one pixel ratio, so you're looking at exactly the same uh, pixels that the end user is going to look at. But for this kind of stuff, I'll zoom out and then zoom back in, which will be command zero to put everything back on the screen the way it wants to be. Also, you'll notice that this box for height is set to auto, which automatically encapsulates and grows to the size of the content of the box. So, all that being said, we're in pretty good shape. Well, you may have noticed that in my FPO under here, let me just delete that, that my text doesn't run right up next to the box. Um, so what I want to do is put some padding in the box. The problem with putting padding in the box is, I'll show you. I'm in live. I'm going to scoot away so you can see what's going on. In my designer panel, I'm choosing style. This is the main box, so I'm going to go here, and then we'll go down to the padding section. I'll make all the padding the same by selecting the link in the middle. And then I'll just start scrubbing. And you can see that it adds padding, but it also makes my box bigger. The problem with that is I'm going to make this responsive design. And um, when I tell the box to be a certain percentage, the padding will remain at whatever pixel count I put here. So it doesn't really, won't really translate into responsive design the way that I want it to. So my workaround for this is to actually place another container inside the main container so that I can put padding on that. And then when I, uh, when I uh, relatively scale my box by percentage, that it doesn't affect the width of the box or that padding won't affect my width of the box. Let me show you. Let me get rid of this. I am going to go to Design View and select all this text. No, oh, which looks like I already did that. Selecting all of this text. There's more ways to do this, but we've done this once, so you know how to do it. I have all that text selected. I'm going to go to the insert file. And in this case, I really don't have um, one of these to choose from. Again, I'm going to choose div. And when I do this, I need to give it a class ID because we've got a few div tags floating around out there. So I'm just going to call this one um, padding. Okay, and I do want this to wrap around the selection that I have, and I'll say okay to that. I'm going to just quickly go check it in code view to make sure what happened, um, or what I think, think happened, really happened. So here's main, which wraps around all my text. If I come down to the bottom, I'll see the other tag. Then I have this uh, div tag with a class of padding, and it should end right before that last main body tag. So that's good. Now I'm going to style that by adding padding to it and you'll see the difference. I'm going to go back into live and we are going to make a new style. Um, we didn't end up with a, um, a new selector so I'm going to say plus and I get dot padding which is exactly what I want. And then I'm going to come down here to padding, click them all together and start scrubbing and you can see how it adds padding to the inside but it doesn't make the box grow. Okay, and I'm going to let, leave that at 35 pixels all the way around. Okay, now we are going to um, take our FPO out. The background FPO we're done with now so I'm going to replace it with the real background and if you remember where the background is, if I go to style it's in the body, it's in background, and it's right here. There's the FPO. And so if I just click here and say, let's go 
back to that images folder and we'll pick the background for the home page which is background home JPEG and say open it just pops right in there and replaces it with the correct background so if I want to um, I want to save all now to just to make sure that I saved everything and you can see that a lot of these have shortcuts you know this is command and shift command s the save all the one that I use constantly has no shortcut so I think I'm going to make a shortcut for it and the way you do that is under Dreamweaver you'll go to keyboard shortcuts if you can't remember that you can always type shortcuts over in the help window or any part of it and then if you float over it it'll show you exactly where it is okay so I'm gonna run over here keyboard shortcuts um, I already have some set I made a new uh, a new set I think it's one of these duplicate set and then I named it my name so I already have some shortcuts um, if, this is, if this is the first time you're making shortcuts um, make a new set and then um, add the shortcuts that you want I'm looking for file and here's save all right whoops right here so um, if I want to add a shortcut I click there and then it says press the keys that you want to use if you press keys that are already in use like the command shift I mean command s and I add those it'll give me this this shortcut is already assigned to save so you really don't want to override it unless it's not a shortcut that you use all the time so I'm going to try this one more time in fact I have command s command shift s but I don't have command option sh uh, shift yes so I'm going to push down all the modifier keys and s and I don't get the error and therefore that's okay now if I come back here you can see that I have a shortcut for it if I remember to use it and I'm going to use it right now if we look watch that asterisk right there it should disappear when I do uh, shift option command and s Hooray. Great success. All right. One other shortcut that might help uh, save you some time is when I go to preview in a browser, I come down here to preview in a browser, and then I can pick one of these browsers that I have uh, installed on my computer. The other place is right here, this little world icon that shows up in the top of your um, um, preview window. I can come here and pick any of these things. But faster are these uh, F key shortcuts. And if I edit browser list at the bottom of here, I can come in and add and subtract browsers. I can also set one to be my primary browser, which appends the, the uh, shortcut to it, and then one for my secondary browser, which keeps things um, moving pretty quick. This option of preview using temporary file means that if you have not yet saved the file that you're opening or trying to preview, it won't stop you and say, hey, you haven't previewed, I mean, you haven't saved yet, um, you need to do that. And um, what this will do is, if you have this selected, it will make a temporary file and then preview it, even if your file's not saved. If you're new at this, I would leave this turned off just to make sure that you know that you have not saved that file yet. Um, it kind of, you know, it's a good warning that things aren't saved. Once you get better at this and you know what you're doing, by all means, turn that on to make things go faster for you. Okay, I'm going to say okay uh, and close. And now I'm going to use my um, my quick keys, my Option and F12 to open. Firefox and I will squish this down in the window so we can see it. It is static um, so it is not responsive yet so eventually this would squeeze down nicely in this window but unfortunately it's not working quite yet but we'll get to it so come back uh, next movie and we'll start doing some more great stuff.